Pick computer science video number 31 where we start to look at iteration and in particular count controlled iteration. Iteration is a key part of programming. Um, we might also know iteration as looping and once you've cracked loops you'll feel that you really are starting to crack programming. Loops are such an important part of making efficient and maintainable programs. A good definition of iteration might be iteration makes a group of statements execute more than one time and automatically. It's useful because it saves having to write out the same statement multiple and possibly many many times. There are two main types of loop. There's the count control loops such as for loops and then there are condition control loops such as while loops and repeat until loops. The first type of loop we're going to look at is, a count, is the count controlled one, the for loop. So I've got my vb.net program here and on the form I've got a bunch of buttons that will test out some different sorts of loops for us. So I've got a button for for loop and if I double click on that I'll see the code that will execute but I've put a breakpoint on it just like last video so we can see what happens as we step through it. As in the last video, which I didn't mention very much, we've got things called variables, which just help our program move along. Variables are um, places in memory that are reserved for storing values, and most programming languages need them and use them. So we've used a couple here. We've used one for which is the basically the count on our loop, how many times we've looped around, and I've just got one for building up a message. Um, so that's what they're about. So let's run it and see what happens with this for loop. Click on the button. My code's going to stop here. I use F11 in this version of VB.net to step through it. And what it's saying is for the variable BT loop, which is currently zero, because when you declare a, a number variable, um, it starts off at zero, uh, it, unless you set it to something different. For zero, uh, for, sorry, for BT loop equaling one to ten. Um, put the value of BT loop into S message. So the first time I hit it, F11, BT loop is going to be 1, because we're doing it for 1 to 10. Uh, so BT loop 1 is going to go as part of our message. So I hit F11 again, and it says next. And when it hits next, it goes back to the top of the loop, and it does the next um, value in the loop. So now BT loop is 2 second time round. So S message will have added two added into it. So if I hover over S message now we can see that S message is actually one space two because we've gone round the loop twice. And if we do it again this time it's going to add three onto it. So with one line one of code inside that loop there we're actually repeating the statement however many times the loop's going round. Now I'm just going to put another breakpoint on my message box there and I'm actually going to hit F5 this time so it's gone around the loop, loop 10 times and you can see there S message has got the value each time uh, the loop's gone round so if I hit F11 now we should see my message come up there we go and we've done some we've got 10 values printed out there in that message box even though uh, we've only got really three lines of code that have done it so that's avoided doing s message equals s message and one, s message equals s message and two, all the way up to ten we've only had to use three lines of code. And if we wanted to do it a thousand times we'd still only need the, the three lines of code. So extremely useful and becomes more useful when we do things like connect up our VB.net programs to a database, but we'll look at that more in a future video. Um, so that's the for loop. Uh, it uses a variable to decide whether the instructions should be repeated. The variable is given start and end values as we saw. The first time the loop is executed the variable is equal to the starting value. When the code gets to the end of the first execution of the loop and arrives at the next statement the variable is incremented and the loop starts again. So we saw that first of all the loop was at 1 and then we got to the next statement and when it went back up to the top it was gone to 2 uh, so it increments each time it hits the next statement. This repeats until the variable reaches the end value which was 10 in our case and at this point the loop executes one last time. So there's the construct um, 
which you might want to try and memorize as with that definition there so all of those bullet points will be good to remember when it comes to for loops so key things to think about first of all with regards to iteration itself a group of statements is executed repeatedly for a set number of times or until a condition is met and specifically count controlled iteration would have been the first part of that iteration definition a count control loop is where a group of instructions is executed for a set number of times a for loop is typically used for this and there's an example where um, this particular piece of code uses a for loop and we are specifying on that first line how many times we want the loop to iterate if we're talking about a for loop we might say the number of iterations is fixed according to the start and end values of a variable set at the beginning so the i loop variable would have been declared before this loop construct and then we're t saying how many times we want to iterate through that variable it has start and end values of 1 and 12 I hope that was helpful with regards to count controlled iteration next time we'll look at condition controlled iteration